Yes, yes, you're going to see a 8700K with a 1080 Ti get smoked by a MacBook Pro with Vega and one of these benchmarks. I'm telling you. Woo! I, I can't move my like, son's asleep. So this is the mother of all performance tests. I'm going to give you some gaming, Photoshop, Lightroom, Final Cut, Premiere, graphics test, 3D, lots of 3D testing. This is your one-stop shop for this new Vega 20 powered MacBook Pro 15. So anyway, let's get stuck into this. I actually found something good on the touch bar. I'm actually doing a screen recording with Screen Grabber or whatever it is in Mojave. And the touch bar has got the stop button. Hey, something good. Anyway, Vega 20. Now this MacBook Pro is the max spec in terms of performance. It has one terabyte SSD, not four. It does have 32 gigs of RAM, an i9, and a Vega 20 GPU. And here's the difference between the GPUs, Vega 20, they're all four gigabytes. The big difference is the Vega GPUs are HBM memory. So high bandwidth memory, very wide memory bus. As you can see down the bottom there, 1024-bit wide memory bus. The Vega 20 comes with 20 compute units versus 16 on the Vega 16. 20, 16 makes sense. And the actual 560 used to have 16. The Vega 20 has a higher clock speed, boost clock speed of 1300, and the Vega 16 about 1085. Now the Radeon Pro 560X, from memory, it was going about 1000 in gaming. Boosting the clocks, Vega architecture versus whatever, that's Polaris 560, and much better memory, much faster memory, double the bandwidth. And that's where all the power is coming from. So let's get into the benchmarks. Now I do have other videos on this, video editing review. I do have a gaming review. You can check that out, but you've probably already seen this already. This is in Premiere Pro. I'll get the final cut in a minute. We're getting a, like a 16% boost from what it was before with the older model with the 560 graphics. Have a look at that. It's beaten some serious PCs there, XPS 15 razor blade. And this will depend on what you're doing. This is H.264 to H.264. If you're using red or something like that, you're gonna get different outcomes. But I have seen some red benchmarks and I've done it myself. It is still faster and it keeps up with all the PCs. No problem there on Premiere and it's used an OpenCL. Like I wouldn't think that would CUDA, but anyway. Let's get on to the next benchmark. Next, let's get into 3D. This is Spec View Perf. And have a look at this. Now, this will give you an indication of the graphics cards, how they perform in 3D. Very similar. And the XPS 15 has a GTX 1050 Ti and the MacBook Pro, obviously, the Vega 20 here. And as you can see here, they trade blows for blows. Some things the Vega is faster and some things the XPS 15 is faster. So this is a very competent graphics card. I mean, just have a look at the second one, Katia. That's where you design like cars and stuff like that, whatever. It's like double the GTX 1050 Ti. And some of the other ones with the 1050 are faster, but it's very competent and some things will favor Vega, some things won't. 3D Studio Max, the same sort of thing. Maya, it's actually faster on the Vega. On the MacBook Pro, May is faster. So yeah, it's a very competent card. This lends more to the fact that, yeah, you're sort of getting GTX 1050 Ti sort of performance. Now this is the OpenCL score in Geekbench. This gives you a, like apples to apples. This is indeed 30% performance boost over the last model. And if you actually look in Windows here, you can actually see you'll get an 81,000. So in Windows, it's gonna perform better. So there you go, very good OpenCL scores. 30% faster than the last model. Here's another good benchmark too. This is 3,538 in supposition 1080p high settings. So you can go test your computer against that. Now with that score there, on a PC, a desktop PC, it's around 3,900 with a 1050 Ti and a 7700K. And that's a desktop. We're not talking laptop. It'll be very close to a 1050 Ti. This is the one that surprised me the most. Wow, have a look at this. This is previews. Obviously, Lightroom likes Vega. And previews use the GPU. And as you can see here, one-to-one -one previews is faster than the 8700K with a GTX 1080 Ti. And that is overclocked GPU and CPU. 5 gigahertz is going. And this MacBook Pro with Vega beat it. Wow. Just wow. Cannot believe it. And if you actually go in Lightroom and you actually use the develop module, it is butter smooth. It performs so well. You can have a look here. The brushes work instantly. No lag. The sliders work instantly as well. Nice and smooth. You can see there the clarity going up and down. It's just, yeah, it just is great for Lightroom. In the develop module it is a game changer. Much smoother than the last model there. When it comes to exporting the NEFs, yeah, it's the same as the last model, you know, because that's CPU. You're not using the GPU to export, you're using just the CPU 
and have a look at all the tests. They're all virtually identical. And look at the two minute tens at the eight seven fifty H and the one forty nines or the one fifties or whatever. They are the i nine, the eight nine fifty H. So they're like spot on within seconds of each other. That is amazing. Let's move on to the Pugent System Photoshop benchmark, and this was an outlier. It was actually slower than the last model. Got to check out why. Did get a higher graphics score than the MacBook Pro i9 with the 560X in it, but I am using Mojave now. Yeah, I guess maybe there might be something to do with that, but I'll test this again. But all these Macs smoke the Razor Blade 15, and that has a GTX 1070 Ti, but look, that does have a good graphics score with the Razor there. Geekbench, whatever. It is faster with Geekbench. Who cares? Cinebench, it's exactly the same as the last model. It's a CPU test, so there's actually no difference. So I'll just show a graph from a previous video. And the XPS 15 is the only one that's got over 13 in this test. And yeah, you can go look at a video. I do have a screenshot of that XPS 13. It did do over 1300, like, and I haven't had a laptop since that's been able to do that. But yeah, same as last model, no change there. All right, let's get into some Final Cut. Everybody was telling me, Bruce X, Bruce X, you got to do Bruce X. And I'm like, what the hell is Bruce X? And I thought it was a porno or something. But no, apparently it's a benchmark. Well, I've done the benchmark. And there you go. 30 seconds versus 47 seconds with the last model, the 560. And have a look at that. EGPU is 30 seconds. Black magic. I looked it up online. 30 seconds. Wow. There you go. And that is a 36% performance gain in Final Cut there. Now, if you're outputting from H.264 to H.264 in Final Cut and you're using QuickSync, it's not going to make much difference because it's not really using the GPU in that sense. It's using the Intel QuickSync encoder. But when you're using software rendering or like using Metal, which is built into Final Cut, then you'll notice the difference with the GPU. But most people won't because they'll be doing H.264 to H.264 and you won't get the benefits of the GPU. This is a Adobe Audition action and it's exactly the same as the last model i didn't even bother putting it here i tested it it was around six seconds so yeah more or less exactly the same because this is a cpu benchmark really that's some compression noise removal whatever still smoked the razor blade there so yeah go check out my gaming review if you haven't already if you want to know about gaming we're getting around 30 35 percent difference from the last model more or less games like a gtx 1050 ti this thing is a friggin beast is it worth upgrading well if you've got the money <laughs> There is significant performance gains, but again, it depends what you're doing. As you can see, Photoshop, not much difference. Lightroom, yeah, it's worth it. Final Cut, if you're going H.264 to H.264, wouldn't bother. Premiere, 100% worth it. Big gains, and you can play back, you know, 4K footage with color correction at full now in Premiere Pro. Big upgrade for Premiere Pro, as fast as all the PCs now. So when it comes to battery, I was using this for around two and a half hours and we had 56% battery left, 50% screen brightness, and I was using Photoshop Premiere, so I was video editing, so the graphics card was lit up, and I was doing a bit of web surfing, a bit of pages. So obviously, if you're just doing web surfing, you're gonna get better battery life, but I was actually video editing, nothing heavy duty, but I was just assembling stuff. I was using Photoshop as well. So pretty good, and I really didn't hear the fan either. So I was watching TV, but I didn't hear the fans. Probably quieter than the last model. When it comes to heat, nothing untowards, pretty much the same temperature on the outside as the last model. Uh, when you game, you're going to go down to a 15 watt TDP on the CPU and it can go down to like 2000 megahertz. And once it throttles down, it's about 80 degrees. It will reach 100, then throttle down. I have been able to measure the temperature on the GPU now and it's in the 70s. It's a bit lower than CPU when you're gaming. If you're just pegging the CPU 100%, it will not throttle. It will at least maintain base frequency, even with AVX. It will maintain 2.9. Without AVX, you'll be able to get 3.3, all core burst, just the CPU. Introduce the GPU, then the CPU will throttle a bit down. Like when I was rendering in Premiere Pro, and I was using the CPU 100% sometimes, and was using the GPU as well, it would go under the 2.9 to about 2.8. And then when the CPU usage went down, it went back up. If you average it out, it's maintaining its base clock speed at least, even with the GPU lit up. When I done Jared's torture test from Jared's tech, I had Unigen going while I was pegging the CPU with Prime 95 AVX and the CPU throttled down to 1.8 gigahertz. But that was with the GPU lit up as well, completely lit up. It was doing the Unigen benchmark and that's the absolute max torture test. And surprisingly, Unigen was running pretty smooth. 
And under load, it sounds the same as the last model, although I think the fans stay off for longer. And I will test it with an external monitor soon. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I've got more to come with this. It took me a lot of effort to do all this. So I really appreciate a like and please subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.